With Coles and Woolworths making record profits, why are our beef, dairy, lamb and grain producers getting paid less than last season? With continued inflationary pressures inside our businesses, what can government do to ensure we don't see farmers making large-scale protests like our European counterparts? Wow. Now, off the back of that Four Corners story tonight, which is pretty explosive, Julian, what can be done? Patricia, this is a time where all Australians are feeling the pinch. Um, you know, mortgages are going up, rents are going up, power prices are going up, and people are watching the grocery prices like never before. But we need a sustainable farming industry in Australia where farmers can turn a profit. And that's why um, my friend David Littleproud, the leader of the National Party, put uh, pressure on the government to call this ACCC inquiry into supermarkets because uh, we need to see competition operating fairly in this country. If people are to trust our supermarkets, we need to ensure that they're, they're charging adequate prices but they're also paying their suppliers so their suppliers can have a sustainable business. OK, but there's 65% of the market that two big ones control. Mel and Deary, is that acceptable? Patricia, a good question by Callum. I mean, the supermarkets, uh, all of you watching, you can reduce your prices now. There's nothing to stop you doing that to assist the Australian people. <laughs> OK. I, I just want to go back to you, if I can, Callum, and, and declaration, you are the president of the Young Nationals in Victoria? Correct. Yeah. That's right. And what would you like to see done immediately? There are many inquiries, but what needs to be done straight away? Well, the... <laughs> I guess for us as, as small business owners, it's, we'd like to know what our price will be for, you know, a length of time. So getting a sustainable price, but getting price security. Mm. That's, that's key for us so we can make investment and we can actually, we can employ people knowing that we're going to have the money to pay for them. And do you think that the supermarkets are involved in price gouging, the two big ones? Oh, oh I... Is that I mean, what it looks like to you? Well, I wouldn't say there's... I think there's a whole supply chain and everyone... There's no transparency in the supply chain, which makes it difficult to say... Like, no-one knows where the money is going. And I genuinely believe that supermarkets use dairy and other perishable products to get people in the door, which is so they can sell their high-margin products. Now, we need to find out where they are actually... I guess where they are... Well, where they're making, what margin they're making on it, and, and make sure that, you know, everything's, I guess, fair and reasonable for us. Yeah. yeah. Yelena? I kind of feel like you hear companies all of a sudden making billions of dollars, mm. right? So it's not just when it maybe comes to supermarkets, but we've heard it, like, other companies and even banks and so on. And then you hear that suppliers are struggling, uh, businesses are closing, people can barely afford things, but uh, uh, their income or their profit has gone up so much, but our earning capacity hasn't. So is it maybe a question of do we put a control on how much can you charge extra, how much can you earn? Um, because I don't think it's fair that not just suppliers, but also people that are buying just groceries these days cannot afford them. So mm. do you put some kind of a, a price control on things and how much you can earn above, you know, whatever amount you get it for? So is that something to look at? Consumers can, can I play... I just want to bring in Gideon, if I can, just because... Now, Gideon, let's just say what's happened to you today at the airport for many hours, <laughs> trying to make the trip to Q&A, but you are still in Sydney, of course, because of the weather. But... This issue is global, isn't it, Gideon? Is there a way to break that, that power block that the big uh, supermarkets seem to have? Well, yeah. I mean, sorry I can't join you in person. I, I was told that uh, to come to Australia because the weather would be fabulous in mm. February. So <laughs> <laughs> It is in Melbourne. Su slightly surprising to be uh, stuck with the boat. So, yeah, fl flooding in Sydney was not on my, uh, my sort of guest list. But, uh, anyway, it's good, good to join you. Um, look, some of this does sound very familiar to European years. And I think there is... Th there are competing pressures, though, because, you know, you're hearing, on the one hand, farmers, as you hear in Europe, saying, look, we, we can't afford to make a living from the prices we're getting from milk or other stuff we're selling to the, the supermarkets. But you're also hearing consumers saying, you know, we want lower prices. And I guess the supermarkets would say well, you know, one of the reasons that we are so tough with the farmers is we're trying to deliver for consumers. It is true they're making big profits, and, and maybe, uh, you know, something could be done about that, but I'm always suspicious of price controls. I think maybe the answer is more competition. If you have a duopoly here in Australia, you know, two, 
supermarkets that are too powerful, probably you need more people in the market uh, to, to create more competition. Uh, uh, uh. I just want to bring Geraldine in, if I can, because I know you were trying to get in before. <laughs> I just wanted to say that we as consumers have a role to play here. If you've got a farmer's market in your neighbourhood, for goodness sake, support it, because then it's a direct relationship between you and the grower. And... <laughs> Farmers work so hard to produce this food for us. And also, I'm really sad to see the end of the local greengrocer, the end of the local butcher. We have to do our part and support our local businesses mm. and have a face-to-face -face, uh, relationship with our farmers if we can. Yelena, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I think, well, the whole price control thing is if you have a look at what happened this week with the Taylor Swift concert, right? Mm. So everyone was getting, trying, no, but was trying to come in and all of a sudden flights were $1,500 from Sydney to Melbourne return. And usually, let's say you've got an average price of four, five hundred. So it shouldn't be triple. I, I think you should put a, a price on it and go, okay, maybe you can go 20% up or 30%, but you can't go up from... $400, $500 to 1500 I'm actually in Sydney in two days' time, and you cannot get a four- or five-star hotel under $1,100. It's impossible, and that shouldn't happen. So I think that kind of price control, someone's earning all of this money, whereas the actual consumers and we who are paying, we're not. We're not earning extra to be able to, to pay for that. But at the end of the day, I think it comes down to who is governing, whether that is, uh, whether that's a government, whether that's a government, body in sport or something mm. else. Uh, the, the whole point of being a good leader or even, let's say, a change maker is having that empathy, having that understanding and thinking about others and being able to provide something that is better for the well-being of others. Mm. And maybe that's quick, something needs to come up. That's a quick reply from you, Melandiri, because Melandiri is actually in the government that can make laws. So what I can say to you, Callum, and to, to all Australians is that this month we have announced the ACCC inquiry uh, into uh, the fact that there are concerns around uh, at cost of living and food. I oh, know, but, but that does kick the can down the road. No, no, no. What but, can what, be done immediately? But, but Patricia, what we have to do is, and if we go back to what Yelena is saying around um, having something in place, the only way you can have something in place and these processes, if there has been an open and transparent conversation uh, with the sector, and that means the suppliers, the wholesalers, the retailers, this review by the ACCC is the first one since 2008. So there has been this massive gap. We don't even know what online shopping is doing to the industry. So this is important. So it is about process. And the second thing is the um, code of conduct review that is looking into uh, the code of conduct of Aldi, Woolies, uh, Coles and also Metcash uh, in terms of uh, their code of conduct around pricing. So there are two really important initiatives that okay. are going on this, starting this month.